Hello, my name is Tariq Muslih. I serve as a Muhsin representative. Muhsin is a national organization called Muslims Understanding and Helping Special Education Needs. I also serve as a youth director and associate imam at the Mecca Center in Willowbrook, Illinois. One of my greatest honors has been being a part of communities and gatherings that, tho that serve those with special needs. Oftentimes when we think about our faith traditions, we find them to be something that is living in the past that we're trying to revive today. One of the, my favorite things about our faith, about the Islamic faith, is the fact that I actually find myself searching through history to find the direction in which to take our community, uh, and particularly in serving, empowering, educating, and being educated by those with special needs. In the Islamic tradition, there is an enormous amount of emphasis on recognizing the status of those with special needs and their families in the Qur'an. In the words of God, we find God the Almighty taking it upon Himself to define what is it that is defined as strength? What is it that is defined as beautiful? What is it that is defined as something virtuous? And time and time and time again, it is that people's strengths are their faith, it's their aspirations, it's their dreams, and it is their good character, and especially as they are with others. And so because of that, I think as we explore what Muhsin does, Muslims understanding and helping special education needs, this organization has revived a prophetic tradition taught to us in the Islamic faith by the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, to allow the mosques, the community centers of the Islamic tradition to be a hub for all people, irrespective of their ethnic background, of their racial orientation, irrespective of what they were able to do or disabilities were. It is to recognize that the masjid, the mosque, is for each and every single person. And what a beautiful history he taught us of this being a part of humanity, that even amongst the greatest servants of God, those, were, those who were prophets, those who were given revelation, were those with special needs. And so welcoming people with special needs into our families uh, and into our religious centers is not something that is uh, supererogatory. It is not something that is a luxury. It is a part of the core tenets of our faith, so much so that God determined that some of His greatest servants be those with special needs. The beautiful thing about that is it completely changes the dynamic of the discourse that we have surrounding faith. And it changes it from being that we are welcoming an other into our faith centers, welcoming an other into our community centers, to doing exactly what Muhsin teaches across the country in one masjid after another, in one mosque after another, telling people that it is our honor to be with those with special needs. It is our honor to be uh, learning from them, empowered by them, educated from them, and to be their caregivers and supporters, because as we are caring and supporting them, they in return are caring and supporting us. And so I want to begin this conversation really highlighting a uh, perspective change, a change of perspective that says not how can we allow them to come into our faith centers irrespective of the faith tradition that we follow, but rather to ask ourselves, what did it take for them to not feel a place there? Where did we lose ourselves? Where did we lose grasp of our tradition that allowed it to be that a mother struggling with a child with autism, that a person who was struggling with a visible or invisible disability was not able to find a space in our faith, in, in our faith centers? And so really recognizing that the default is that we have space for them. The default is that we have space for them within our walls, within our activities, within our events, and within, and within our programs. But most importantly, that we create space for them in our hearts. And so this is one of the things that I really think when we talk about accessibility, a lot of times we think of accessibility as a service. We think of accessibility as a logistical accommodation, when in reality, accessibility is one of the greatest languages of love. Because when we begin to open the doors of accessibility, whether it is our physical doors or whether it is our uh, hearts that we're opening up, what we are saying to those people is that, we have love for you. We have value for you. 
uh, we, 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 we value what, we bring, what, what you bring and we love uh, what you bring to our community centers. And if there's one thing that all of our faith traditions they teach us is that God's love is something that encompasses all people. God's love is something that transcends any of our human labels and structures that we create. And so to really embrace this as a part of our Islamic tradition. And so what Muhsin has done for the Muslim community first uh, in the United States of America, and now as it has launched it to be a trend across the country, across the continent, and across the globe, Muhsin has taken this very principle of accessibility, this very uh, principle of value and love for those uh, who are abled or, or, or struggle with different disabilities, and said that this is our mission, to bring this as a focal point in mosques and faith centers across uh, the community. And one of the greatest things that I love about the work that Muhsin has done is it has been able to do something very transformative in our centers in that it allowed it to be a way in which our mosques and our faith centers are able to earn credibility with the community at large. So the, they created a certification process that if, a, that if a masjid or a mosque goes through the certification process, they can then be labeled and announced to the Muslim community across uh, the community and to the community at large that this is a mosque or a masjid that accommodates for those with special needs. That this is a community that has awareness events. That this is a community that provides support groups. This is a community that does uh, educational programs. And this is a community that not just does particular programs uh, in, in, in light of addressing uh, people with special needs and their families, but this is a community that embraces people with special needs and their family, and it actually hallmarks itself in allowing them to become a part of the already existing program. I know that for us at the Mecca Center uh, where I serve, that what this means is that our youth programs are able to be accessed by those with special needs, and that our Sunday school and our Quranic education programs, learning religious scripture, is something that is accessible to those with special needs and their families. And there's also to recognize that we must enter the discussion of those with special needs and their families in a position of curiosity and humility. And this is something that is taught to us by our tradition, that as we welcome people into our community centers, that we may need to learn from them, what does it look like for them, for our community centers to be accessible? What does it look like for them, for us to empower them? What does it look like for them, for us to be able to include them in conversations? So inclusivity, accessibility, and empowerment are not just buzzwords that we have to use in order to attract those with special needs, but they need to be meaningful conversations. And they need to be dialogues in which we as community leaders and we as community members come to the table in a position of humility, in a position of curiosity, to learn from those with special needs, to learn from their caregivers and their family members, what does it look like for you, for this community center to be accessible, for this community center to be inclusive, and what does it look like for us to empower you? And so what this does is, again, it's a, it's a paradigm shift. It's changing it from saying, we will tell you what, you what we will do for you, to you telling us what we can do for you and teaching us how we can serve you. And, and this is something that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, taught us. It is to recognize the best of what each and every single person has to bring to the table. That is to recognize the nobility of being a person who is a server of the people. And that is why the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, he taught us that the, that the leader of a people is the one who serves them. And so to recognize that just as we serve those with special needs, that there is an opportunity for us to be served by them. One of the most powerful things that I've been able to do as a youth director is to actually sit in silence and to have people with special needs engage with our youth as fellow youth, allow conversations to take place in a very authentic way about what it is like for them to have the tenacity, to have the courage, to have uh, the strength and the bravery to actually live their every single day life for them to overcome the obstacles of their physical, their visible, or their invisible disabilities, and to recognize that we as human beings are a part of a beautiful mosaic that is created by God Almighty. This mosaic makes it very clear that we are all broken 
differently, that we all have a different set of abilities and a different set of disabilities. And it is simply by combining that which is my strengths and that which are my weaknesses and that which is the strengths and the weaknesses of the sister or brother of humanity and the sister and brother of faith that does have a physical disability or does have a special need or might have a, a, a disability that is not even visible and to recognize that they too are a part of that beautiful mosaic of life. That means that while we empower our folks with special needs in our community, that we also become ready to learn from them that we also become ready to be led by them. And the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, he actually demonstrated this so beautifully by allowing people with special needs to be some of the greatest leaders in Islamic tradition. And what this does to our community is it sets the tone for what it means to have them be our leaders. And that is that they can lead us in service efforts, they can lead us in educational institutes, they can lead us in what it means to stand for the rights of those that are marginalized in our communities, and they can lead us in what it means to be a people of good character. And actually, I will say that one of the greatest things that Muhsin does is it allows there to, to be a space where those with special needs can not only be, be listened to, but that those with special needs can actually take their thoughts form them into ideas, form them into initiatives, and then it allows the rest of the community to come together and help those folks with special needs to, to meet their aspirations and to actually go far beyond them. And so I'm incredibly grateful uh, to God and incredibly grateful for the Muhsin team, which has volunteers across the nation for the wonderful work that they do in representing the core essence of Islam. This message of all-inclusive love, this message of all-inclusive accessibility, this message of all-inclusive empowerment that says that irrespective of what your experience has been like, irrespective of what your struggles are, physical, cognitive, or otherwise, that the community is your community, that you are not an other in this community center, that you are not an other in our faith community, the Muslim community, that rather that people of all walks of life, that they are a people that are welcome, they are a people worthy of love, they are a people worthy of listening to and being heard, they are a people worthy of empowerment. And so the last point that I will say is that really recognizing that, that as our mosques and as our community centers and as houses of worship across the United States take this uh, this model that Muhsin has created, a model that does a wonderful job in depicting that this is something that raises the status of our community centers. That as we begin to say that there are conversations that need to be had, support groups that need to be provided, accommodations that need to be made, and empowerment that needs to be done, that this is a way that we truly strengthen the fabric of our community. This is not a service that begins and ends as a benefit to those with special needs. This is a, a service that begins and ends as a benefit to the entire community. And that's why the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, the Prophet Muhammad, he taught us that, that we as a nation, we as a people, we as a community of, of, of faith and humanity, that when one of us is struggling with something and another one comes to help us out, that this is a benefit for everyone, that we lift each other into greatness. And this is what God loves to see us do. We know that God is perfect, that God is all-knowing, that God is all-hearing, that God is all-seeing, that God is perfect in each and every single thing that He does. Part of the perfection of God is that nothing and no one in this world is perfect. The perfect, that we are all perfectly imperfect. And so one of the infinite wisdoms of God is that this perfectly imperfect world was designed as it is, the way that it is, with who it has in the world, each and every single one of us imperfect differently. That is a perfectly great example of what we could do as people with special needs, as people who have normal or ordinary abilities or otherwise, that we can actually represent what happens when the imperfect servants of God come together 
to perfectly serve each other and to perfectly serve the rest of his creation in obedience to God. And I can't think of an organization that represents this, that embodies this, and this models this in such a powerful way than the Muslims' understanding and helping special education needs. Muhsin, as an organization, has truly taken it to the next level and has created a trend and a wave of transformation within our Muslim community. Conversations that began with a lot of stigma, conversations that began with a lot of heartbreak, conversations that began with a lot of trauma, conversations that began with a lot of divisiveness, a lot, a lot of illiteracy surrounding people with special needs, surrounding what their status is with God, surrounding what their status is at the community at large, and it had those difficult conversations because that is not something that we simply owe to those with special needs and their families. That is something we owe to God. That is something that we owe to the community at large, and that is something that we owe to the generations to come. We must allow this not to be a luxury. We must allow this to not just be something that we do in a tokenizing way. This has to be an individual journey, a familial journey, and a community-wide journey that allows us to transform our communities as those that are uh, restricted as to who they serve to those that serve all and are served by all uh, for the community at large. And so with that, I thank uh, the organizers of this program I, and I thank uh, Muhsin for giving me the opportunity to be a part of this conversation. And I hope that all of us come together as people of all faiths in really calling to the need to serve uh, those of all backgrounds, of all challenges, and of all disabilities. And if there's one thing that the COVID-19 taught us is that regardless of what we think we are capable of, we are only as strong as we are grounded in faith, and we are only as strong as we are grounded with each other. I send you all my best wishes. Thank you so much.